الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله يا ربنا يغفر لنا ذنوبنا لقد ظلمنا أنفسنا ونعترف على ذنبنا ولا هادي إلا أنت ونعوذ بك من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا ومن العين ومن الحسد ومن الذين يقصدون سوء لنا أنت مولانا ونصلي ونسلم على الذي أرسلته بالحجة ودين الحق إن سورة المائدة الله تبارك وتعالى سيزعادل هو أقرب للتقوى Be just in the command form is saying that it, the affair of being just is closer to taqwa but right? is that affair which brings us into that realm of taqwa of implementing the deen Abu Ja'far Imam Abu Ja'far rahmatullahi alayhi related in tafsir al-Tabari that the meaning of this the issue of to be just is to be just to those who are your friends and those who are your enemies alike and interestingly enough I was reflecting after coming from a rally and the rally was regarding uh, closing down detention centers in which children are being held five of which are in the Chicago area and those types of detention centers are being supported by Amazon and so on and so forth by the types of agreements that are being made for services and other things or that type of practice and so you see young children being separated from their families due to the global situation in which there's disruption on the political and economic level and because the world is interconnected you find that <coughs> what goes on here affects what goes on in other places <coughs> and so I had posted some of the videos and primarily this event was held by a coalition groups and there's a group that is working on a national level uh, to end detention centers across the country and so they decided to call a coalition of different people and it happened to be that part of that group that came or one of the groups that came to support that cause along with maybe 30 other groups that were asked religious and non-religious one of those groups was uh, someone representing the LGBT community so I had posted the video some of the I had posted different segments of the videos that I shot and someone sent me something about marching with the LGBT so on and so forth and making it trying to make it an issue the problem that I have with this type of reality is that you're trying to say to be present in a rally which is seeking one to mile. defend the dignity Exit of right. children who are being arrested that this is haram that's extremely problematic Has because reported in ahead. that whole in that whole event there were even people that were holding up pictures of the rights for Muslims to exist immigrant Muslims here and so you have some Muslims that don't have the concept of understanding how to be just with those who are their friends or those who are their enemies. You missed the point. The point here is safeguarding human life and human dignity. It has nothing to do with what someone does in their backyard. In these types of situations, groups... In a quarter of a mile, exit right. From the angle of... Hold on one second. In these types of situations, groups will assert themselves because each group has its political agenda. But the reality of the situation is that the goal is clear. In this type of situation, the goal is clear. The goal is to defend the rights of children that are falling through the system. And cases were mentioned. Many uh, children that are taken from their families. One case was mentioned where a child was taken from one part of the country and shipped off to another part of the country and the 
people that were involved in advocacy work, they couldn't find the child. And there was a psychologist on one of the videos I posted, a woman who's doing psychotherapy, and she was talking about the psychological ramifications of these types of situations on the lives of human beings. Another thing she was talking about is how me mental illness is in part caused by so, uh, breakdowns in social relations. And so it's like, you know, Muslims, you have to ask yourself, where are you at? Where are you at? You talk a lot of nonsense, many of you Muslims, right? And you claim that we are brothers. You claim that we're brothers in Iman. I don't see the manifestation of your Iman. You have no voice in this society as far as standing up for what's just. But other people are standing up for your rights to exist. Other people are standing up for you to have rights to wear hijab, for you had to have rights in the workplace, for you to be able to manifest your iman. People fought for that. It was people that were involved in the struggle, whether it was people like Muhammad Ali or others or different groups, groups that you may have an issue with. They fought for your rights to be able to practice, for your rights to be able to do certain things. And you sit on the sidelines and you talk a bunch of moral nonsense. I say moral nonsense because your word has no weight. Your iman doesn't manifest itself in action for the society. If you have iman between you and Allah, that's mashallah, it's all good. But what you have as far as yourself in the society, some of you Muslim brothers and sisters, is that you talk a lot of nonsense of a self-righteous discourse that you put forward like you're holier than now. Right, and that's a problematic situation. One of the stories that was related was about women being raped on the border and being pregnant. And so even with those types of situations, you have no response. Some of you will say, well, abortion is haram across the board. You don't, you don't look at the human factor. You don't look at what, what it is that Islam addresses in those types of situations. You think that you understand Islam. And so it becomes a problem when you have people, they're fighting for the rights of the Palestinians. They're fighting for the rights of the Kashmiris. They're fighting for the rights of the immigrants. They're fighting for housing control issues. They're fighting for workers' rights. And you just sit around and talk about what's right and wrong. And you expect me to believe you have a commitment to the deen of Islam? It's not my problem what someone's sexuality is. It, it really isn't at that point in time. That's between them and Allah Taala. Wa ta Society falling apart in front of your face. That's the bottom line. There's children in jails. That's the bottom line. There's children disappearing from their families. Some, by the way, which are Muslim. How do I know? Because one of the imams from the three Puerto Rican imams was at the border with another Latino Muslim organization, which is our sister organization, Latino Muslim Foundation. And they were there and they tell us who's coming across the border. Some of the people which are Muslim. And there was actually recently a Somali brother who died in ICE custody. And the only thing that you have to say is that because you see some sort of flag in a, in a rally, that you have an issue with the flag, you can't be associated. Well, you just allow people to die. Let that be on your account and your scale. You had no voice for the sake of human life, period. Because of your so-called self-righteousness that you're have your you're on the dean and you're on the sunnah and so so forth you have no concern for human beings it's sad when people that you say have no iman have kufr this and that they're standing up for human life and the only thing that you're doing is sitting on the sidelines critiquing you should be taken to task for that the only thing that you're doing on the sidelines is critiquing people and judging their iman and you don't know what's in their hearts and you don't know what's in their intention and you have no delete to be able to say that somebody is not in the position of iman that's what that's this is the point of false religiosity that people have achieved a level of false religiosity in which they think they're doing a service to the deen in a time which is confusing but in reality they're not it's other people that are standing there fighting for their rights standing there for their ability to have free speech standing there for the ability to assemble standing there for their ability to immigrate it was the protests in the streets in the 60s it was the people that were being bitten by dogs it was the people that were being arrested that allowed 
a majority of the portion of Muslim community which exists here to immigrate to this land. It, recently, there was a case in, te in Texas where there was a lawsuit that went to the Equal Oppor Opportunity Department regarding a situation that Muslims had in the workplace. Well, in 1967, the whole issue of equal opportunities came from people protesting in the street and people fighting in the civil rights movement. And that's why now Muslims will say, well, that's not right in the workplace. And then some Muslims, what are you going to say? What are you going to say? That is not in the book in the Sunnah. So don't the book in the Sunnah teach you to better the society? Don't the book in the Sunnah teach you to give dawah? If you have so much of a problem with the LGBT community, what kind of work are you doing to bring the people into the deen? What type of work are you doing to interact with those people and bring them into the deen? Or the only thing that you have on the sidelines is just talk and critique, right? Critique is critique even with no real basis from the angle of, you know, what Dr. Lewis Gordon says that critique should be to better the situation. That's not what you have. You just have a bunch of empty words. And the, I'm not here from the issue to be seen or the issue where he thinks this or that. That's not the point. I don't post that stuff for the, from the angle of people to uh, give me kudos or disagree. I post it to say, like, look, this is what's going on in society. And this is like, these are issues that we need to address, right? And, and motivate people to be involved. When are you going to do something, O Muslims? You have a critique for every movement that's out here, but you do nothing at all, O Muslims. And the work of the Muslims that are involved, they have to align themselves with other people. Right? Just like somebody somebody recently was joking about the whole issue of the uh, of feminism and this and that. And, and uh, about how women do this and do that. And I said, you know what? At the end of the day, you want to critique about that. In the context of the joke. But I said, you know, I just got a message about doing a workshop for domestic violence in the Muslim community. Right? Because I got a number from a social service org that is rising. So as we sit around and we talk about feminism this and feminism that and, and this and that and with this group and that, you know, at the end of the day, our community is falling apart and you have no response. No response. What gives you the right to critique is you get your butt and you do something. Then you come and you bring me something. That's how you have to be talked to, some of you. Do something, right? If you if you want a correct response on the Sunnah 100%, like you want to say, well, let's see it. But what's going to happen is that you're going to say, well, the Sunnah doesn't tell us to do that. The Sunnah doesn't tell us, you know, the Deen doesn't also tell us that the optimal form of government is kingship. To have a kingdom, actually, that is something that is what? It's something that's noted as the signs of the last day with the collapse, right, of Muslim authority. But, and yet, you approve of it. That's not in the deen of Islam. Having rights is not in the book in the sunnah directly to have the rights to come into a country or the rights to work. But I guarantee you don't want to work in slave conditions. You know what I'm saying? So you have to understand the how to apply the book in the sunnah, how to apply these situations. You have to understand that the situation of working on the ground where we're at in today's time is messy. It's not clear. It's gray. It's not perfect. That's where we're at. That's the situation that we're at. You know, we're in a situation in which poverty is knocking on many people's doors and is forcing them into all kinds of crazy situations. And unfortunately, you know, when it comes to the issue of immigration, the Muslims are getting caught up into that. Because at the same time, you have nothing to say also about the fact that there's Muslims bombing another Muslim country. And those Muslims are, you know, there's multiple Muslim countries right now bombing other Muslim countries. And the consequence is that there's people going to be refugees and they're going to be migrants and they're going to be fleeing the land and there's going to be Muslim women getting raped. But you have nothing to say about that. So at the end of the day, personally, I don't care what y'all have to say about me. I have to I have to say it like that in a very rude way. You know, you say, oh, he's supposed to be an imam. I've been told that type of stuff. Yeah, I don't have, I don't care what you have to say. I don't care what you say in the community about me. I don't care what you have to say on my page. I don't care. I'm saying to you, you're not doing anything. You're not down with anything. And you haven't demonstrated that you're about the deen. Because people are suffering. 
Some of you who have to critique, I'll tell you this, people are suffering and what are you doing about it? How are you even raising your voice for human dignity, period? You don't have to do the same thing. You don't have to do the same thing that some of us are trying to do, but what are you doing about it? What are you doing about to protect the dignity of Muslim women that are being raped? What are you doing about women that are being raped? What are you doing about children that are suffering in poverty? Or what are you doing about parents that are trying to get into this country for medical attention and now they've been denied that? What are you doing for human life and human dignity? Don't give me about the ideal conditions. Don't give me about what should be the case because it's not going to be a perfect situation. We're talking about right now with the conditions as they are right now. Not with the conditions as you want them to be, but with the conditions of life as they are right now. What are you doing to represent that Islam cares about human beings? Don't tell me about what Islam thinks about the LGBT community and the feminist group and this and that. What are you doing to make sure that the Muslim community is represented as standing up for human dignity? That's the bottom line. At the end of the day, if you have nothing to bring to the table, all of y'all, no matter what you think you're bringing from the Quran and the Sunnah, I ask Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala and yuqeem al hujja alaykum. Right? To establish the proof on you. Because at the end of the day, all you're doing is shooting from the hip, from the sideline. That's the, that's the only thing that you're doing. You're not standing up for the rights of Muslims. You, you just, some of y'all have justified the killing of the Yemenis. Right? You don't know what to do with the Kurdish situation. You're not doing social services when it comes to dealing with the Syrians. When it comes to deal with the Burmese. When it comes to deal with the, with the Uyghurs and the Uyghurs, what are you doing? When it comes to deal with the issue of the Kashmiris, what are you doing? When it comes to deal with the issue of the Palestinians, what are you doing? When it comes to deal with the issue of the African Americans, what are you doing? When it comes to deal with the issues of the converts, what are you doing? When it comes to deal with the issues of sisters that have been beat down and they're trying to look for a way out of their marriages, what are you doing? When it comes to the issue of Muslims displaced, overall, what are you doing? The deen is not an issue of just talking and rambling and just quoting hadith and just sitting like you are master of fatwa. At the end of the day, if you're not involved and you don't get involved, then you don't even understand how to function. That's the bottom line. The fiqh that you're bringing to the table is not the fiqh of being involved in the messiness of the situation. I can sit from the sideline and put out the book and say, well, you know, we have a hadith that says this and an ayat that says this. And the question is, how do you apply it? That's the bottom line of the situation. There's no ideal situations here. You're living, in, you're living in a situation which be, is becoming messier by the day. And if you don't have a response, then, you know, the reality of the situation is that you're silent. And if you don't have a response, the reality is that by the days your rights go. And we see that that's, that's the struggle. That's the situation at the end of the day. Whether it's, you know, people being discriminated against for hijab, for speaking Spanish, people, uh, uh, you know, suffering. Because of war, people suffering because of poverty. Give me some solutions. That's what I'm waiting for. Give me the ideal minhaj of operating in that situation. When you bring that to me, then I, you know, I'll sit there and I listen. But for you to sit from the sidelines and, and, and say this and that and so on and so forth, that's not a solution. That's not, that's not a practical, tangible way of engaging reality. You think I don't know that? Half of y'all that are talking haven't even covered six books of hadith. Half of y'all talking and, and judging, you haven't even studied with the ulama a year and a half or two years. That's the reality of, of, of the situation. And then some of the scholars that you talk about, you know, that say this and that, haven't even been on the ground and dealing with this situation. Actually, their bellies are fat from eating and just sitting and reading books and not interacting. If they want to do something, let them give half of their wealth for the deen. You know what I'm saying? To, or or let, let them be in a situation where they talk about building the economy for the Muslims. Or building an environment that's healthy for the Muslims. Or fighting for the Muslims to be in a situation of safety. That's not what's going on. When the scholars begin to talk like that, they end up going to jail. So the situation is real. You may think that it's fake. You may think that you're going to sit and judge people. And, and for me personally, I love it. Continue to judge me. Continue to say whatever you want to say about me. Because at the end of the day, you know what? Everything that comes in a negative sense... 
I'm going to take it and use it because I have my own imperfections. So when it comes my way, if it comes as a backbiting situation or this and that, you know what? I'm I'm going to be the one that takes the options not to forgive. I'm going to be I'm going to to be the one that's going to use that on the day of Yom Al-Qiyamah and put it on my mizan and I'm going to say to you, "Thank you very much. I love you too, brother. I love you too, sister." You know, and that's that's the reality at the end of we don't need that. What we need is solutions to be put on the table. If you feel that something is not the model way to be addressed, don't bring me a sideline critique. Anybody can bring a sideline critique. You know, bring, well, how can we better the situation? What can we do? What are the alternatives? They don't bring talking to me the haram. That's, there's no fic in that. You don't even know what's haram and halal. You're just reading what, what you heard someone say from a fatwa. Like I said, you know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, don't give me fit from a kingdom. Give me fit that is suitable to a pluralistic secular democracy. Don't give me the fit of the kingdom of Saudi Arabia because the fit of a kingdom of Saudi Arabia, the citizen doesn't exist to be able to even challenge the system. That's the reality at the end of the day. We built this country. We built this country. So if we built this country and we continue to build it and we continue to suffer for it, we're going to use whatever rights we have to make sure that whatever good we can bring to the forward, forward for the community, for you as well, and for our brothers and sisters, that we operate out of that. Some of you haven't come to that realization. You're under this concept that we're in some sort of Islamic glory, right? That, that's the reality that you, know, that you think that you're in. But you, you're not realizing we're in a major crisis in the world. A crisis, a humanitarian crisis that's global. And it's only going to get worse right now with Turkey going into Syria and they started bombing and, and the Kurds and this is only going to get worse. The, the Muslims are the number one refugees on the face of the earth along with the Latin Americans and then the Africans and the scattering of others. Muslims are being scattered throughout all of the world. If you have no stand for human rights and immigrant rights from that angle, you're in a problem when it comes to the Muslim community because it's not going to be people trying to come into the West any longer and they come in on the visa that allows them to be a doctor or engineer this. They're going to come with being raped. They're going to come with seeing their relatives killed. They're going to come with surviving death. They're going to come suffering starvation. They're going to come after they apply to multiple lands if they even get to come, even if they get to come. And so they're going to be rejected from all types of people. The Burmese weren't allowed in. The Burmese were being allowed in Bangladesh. That's the reality of the situation. You know, and as, as this gets worse, there's no countries that are going to continue to take refugees all over the place. Everybody now is closing their borders. So you, you have to get with the reality of where things are at, what crisis situation it is that we're going through. If children have no rights, children... It could be your child. If children have no rights, if children are being taken from their families, even what about the native indigenous tribe in the Arizona region that the border wall went through it and half of the tribe lives on the side of the U.S. and the other lives in Mexico. And now they're even being taken and they're indigenous to their land and they're being taken and arrested. What about their rights? Where do you use oh, all? Because they're not Muslim. Get out of here with that. Assalamu